Hey, hello everyone. Good evening. Well, please do let me know if you all are able to hear me clearly. Is there any disturbance in the audio, video or anything? Well, hello, hello everyone. Hello Divya and hello everyone else as well. Is it good to go? Are you all able to hear me clearly and see the webcam clearly? Yeah? Right? Well, that's good. That's good. Hi, Tejas. Hello, Nishant. Hello. Hello, everyone. Okay, I still didn't get confirmation from all of you that if everything is good to go. Is the audio clear enough? Yes. Divya says yes. Rupa says yes. Very good. Very good. Very good. Well, so now that you are able to hear me clearly and see the webcam, well, let me introduce myself. A very good evening everyone, everyone who is uh, watching the live session. Welcome to the class. Well, if you have attended my classes before, you must be knowing my name. But if you are doing it for the first time, there we go with some of my details. This is Dr. Nasma from Vedantu, chemistry expert. I have been teaching chemistry from past uh, 7 years. And I was helping out the students of CBSE, ICSE and competitive exams right well let me tell you something i see all your messages and my apologies if i'm not able to take out all your names because as you see the number of attendees is a little high yeah so on a, welcome to the session everyone on a whole done so well guys why are we here today uh why do you think we are here today you have come to learn something right what is that yeah Well, Namaste, very good evening, but then chemical reactions, yes, this is what I was expecting. We are here today to learn something, right? And we are here today to learn chemical reactions of class 10 CBS, isn't it? But let me ask you something, guys, how many of you are from class 10? How many of you are from class 10? Class 10 CBSE. Just say me. Enough. How many of you are from class 10? Pooja, Aryan, Shilpi, Ashish, Radhika, Aditya and many more, many more, many more. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Anybody from class 9 as well? Mm -hmm. That's nice. That's nice. Most of you are from class 10. So, the session is apt for you. And if there is somebody from class 9, nothing to worry. You're going to learn something out of the session today. Well, guys, so if you are in class 10 CBSC, this is your midterm season, right? Yeah? How is your midterm preparation going on if your exam is not done? And if you are done with your exam, how did you do it? Hmm. In between, I keep looking on to my right. Do not assume that I'm watching somewhere. I'm looking at your chat messages. Yeah. So, great, good, very good. Not it done. Fantastic. Hooray, well, yeah, that's nice uh, set of responses. Let's come to chemistry portions of your midterm. I'm sure 90% of the schools would be having chapter 1, 2, 3, right? Yeah. You also must have studied first three chapters, have you? Hmm. How confident are you in first three chapters of chemistry? Chemical reactions and equations, acid bases and salts and metals and non-metals. How confident are you? Are you confident? Let me ask you this way. Are you confident in first three chapters? Super confident? Array, that's nice. I see most of you saying yes. If it is true, then I'm glad. But then, is there anyone who feels that chemistry is tough and especially first three chapters of chemistry is tough. Arunav, like your honesty. Aditya, good. Elit, 80%. 70%. Are, 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 flood of responses. Well, those who said that you are super confident in chemistry. I have a question for all of you. Are you ready for the question then? Ready for the question? Yeah? 90%, 99%, I love that answer. 
95% okay okay good well if you're really done with your first five chapters of preparation I mean first three chapters of preparation in chemistry and if you're really confident in it try to answer one question of mine yeah so that question is uh, yeah a little lengthy question I hope everyone is ready ready for the question then there you go with the question on the screen do you see it can you write any five chemical reactions right away don't write, write the simplest ones like H2 plus O2 gives H2O even six standard kid knows it right so try to write some standard chemical equations five chemical equations how many of you would be able to write it you can be pretty honest you know you don't need to bluff or lie here because obvious reasons well I see Ashish answering the question and what about others in the class can you write five chemical reactions right now if you can write just let me know let me know through the chat box I'm waiting for your answers Dave that's a pretty smart answer but please try to write it in equation form okay I guess I call the same as the light hmm H plus Br my dear look at the symbol okay very good most of you are just saying yes 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 if yes please let me know the equations h2 plus o2 gives h2o mg plus o2 gives 2mgo mukesh some of you are just writing the reactants and some of you are writing the word equations that's really great guys thank you so much for your responses so far and uh, yeah i'm glad to say that most of you have tried well but what about others in the class? What about others who still haven't replied? Or what about those students who are saying C plus O2 gets CO2 still? Do you think only C plus O2 gets CO2 kind of equations are going to help us out to clear 10 CBSE? Let's talk, uh, let's talk about this stuff a little honestly. How many of you would feel a little difficulty in learning equations, memorizing them and understanding how to write the physical state and understanding how to write the products of any reaction and uh, converting the verb equation into its chemical equation. Anyone, anyone who is feeling difficulty, guys this is an interactive session until unless you let me know if you are finding this problematic or not, I will not give to know. And only when I know your problems, I'll be able to, you know, take more and more webinars or more classes on your pain points, right? So please do let me. Do you really find, a, do you really find some parts of this chemistry troublesome? What are your pain points? What are your tough, tough, tough points in chemistry? Okay, chemistry itself is tough, uh, I know, but yeah, we have to, <laughs> no other option. We just have to study it now. Well. Some of you are saying that, yeah, we find, uh, we find chemistry tough, uh, reaction stuff, accuracy. I'm asking what are your pain points? What are your trouble, troublesome points in chemistry and especially in chemical reactions? Would you be able to write the products of any reaction? Let me ask you. If I give you a reaction and ask you to write the products, would you be able to do that? Yeah? Alright, come on, tell me. Would you be able to do it? 50-50? Vivek, equations are tough, Lichita, next, only these redox reactions are tough, okay, finding difficulty in writing the products, remembering formulae, equations, there, there the truth comes, mm, balancing equations, yeah, one of the most troublesome points for most of the students, many students, redox reactions, bonding, mm-hmm, Okay, balancing is tough. Well, so your pain points are like balancing redox reactions, especially the equations. But what about writing products? If I now give you the reactants, would you be able to write the products then and there? Would you be able to write the products then and there? Oh, you are trying to memorize that by heart, which doesn't work, my dear. Well. Would you be able to write the product if I give you a reaction right away? Yeah? Mm -hmm. I'm glad to see most of you saying yes. I love this answer. Easy? Yeah? 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 But some of you are saying no. Right. 
So for some of you, even that's a pain point, right? And now, now that we are here to, you know, talk about how to memorize every chemical equation for class 10 CBSE exams, let's talk about some tricks. What's it? Ready for it? Yeah. Let's let's talk about you know some analogies or some tricks which will help us. In fact, learn the chemical equations in spite of just by hearting it or memorizing it. Yeah? Shall we? Ready for it? Okay, then if you want to really get benefited out of this session, which is going to last for some around 40 45 minutes, you should be having a pen and paper. Do you have it? And you should be really genuine enough to learn it. Ready? That's great, that's great. I today probably have got the smart students in today's class. So let us start. What do you think is really needed to learn chemical equations? I repeat, to learn chemical equations, not to memorize them, not to by heart them, or not to study them as they are. What do you think is essential or what do you think is needed so that you understand the reaction and you easily be able to reflect that reaction? Some suggestions? Some suggestions? Very good. Maha Lakshmi, Valencies, good. Understanding them, Sukumar, right. Next, atomic number and valencies, very good, pretty. Chemical symbols and valency, Myra, sorry, Maria, I'm so sorry. Very good. How can we learn valency easily? I'm going to talk about it in today's session. Balancing chemical names, oh my god, so many, so many. Do you know something? If you really want to learn a chemical reaction, I believe you need three things. Only three things. The first one is reactivity series. How many of you have an idea about reactivity series? Reactivity series. Yeah? What is metal reactivity series? Somebody says, no, how did you give your midterm exams, my dear? How did you? We all know it, right? We studied it in first chapter. We also studied it in third chapter. Isn't it exhaustive? Well, the second thing that you need is valency. Somebody asked me how to learn valency easily. We are going to talk about it. Later, you should know about ions. So is there anyone in the class who do not have idea about these three categories or these three points? Anyone? Anyone? Yes or no? We all have an idea. At least we have heard about it at some point of time. Have we? Yes, we have heard about it. Yeah, I know some of you are asking me to talk elaborately about ions and valency. We are going to do it. Do not worry at all. So, according to me, if you know these three things thoroughly, that is the first step to learn or to master any chemical reaction. So, now what shall we do is, let me just brief you about this reactivity series, valency and ions and then with the help of these three, let's understand how to memorize the chemical reactions. Yeah. So well guys, reactivity series, can you define what reactivity series is? What is reactivity series? What is reactivity series? What does it have? It has... Yes, there is reactivity series for metals and non-metals, but then right now we're going to talk about metals. Yeah, there is a reactivity series for non-metals as well. Well guys, reactivity series is nothing but the order in which all the metals are arranged according to their reactivity, right? So in reactivity series, we have a list of metals arranged according to their reactivity. The beginning element of the reactivity series is going to be something which has high reactivity and the ending element is going to be something which has low reactivity series. So can you try telling some elements of the reactivity series in the same order? Very good, very good. I see your answers. I'm so sorry I'm not able to take out all your names, but keep answering this way. Because I'll go through these answers after the session also. Yeah? Well, very good. Some elements, potassium, calcium, zinc, barium, sodium, very good, very good. Magnesium, aluminium, zinc, very good guys, very good. And now, now just let me know something. What is the reactivity order of this all element that you are talking of? Which among this is most reactive? Most reactive element out of whatever you have said. Gold, are you sure? Copper, sodium, pavan, good pavan. 
Rudashiam, who said, I guess Amit, I'm sorry, I missed your name. Well, Ashish, very good, very good, very good. Sodium, Rudashiam, Lithium. In fact, the reactivity series that we study starts with potassium. So, potassium is considered to be the most reactive element of the reactivity series. And it goes on to sodium, calcium, magnesium, aluminium, zinc, etc, etc, etc. Yeah? So, guys, do you have a shortcut to memorize this reactivity series or would you need one? Do you have a shortcut to memorize this? Do you? Do you have a shortcut? Yeah? No or S? No or S? Okay, I go on the proportion. How many of you are S and how many of you are no? If many of you are saying no, then I'll go with the shortcut. If many of you are saying S, then I'll go with the second step, that is valency. Okay, it's a mixture. It's a mixture. Those who do not know, just tell me no. No, 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 no. Okay, then I'm going to cover the shortcut in one minute. But before that, you should do something for me, will you? Yeah? And that something is, I want you to memorize one statement for me. Okay? Yeah? And the statement is, and the statement is, here, I'm writing it here. Please stop calling me a zebra. Done? Memorizing it? Please stop calling me a zebra. Did you, did you learn it? Yeah? I'll ask you the statement again. I'll close the slide and I'll ask you this again. Done? And after this. Instead, learn how copper mined saving gold. You know what? Uh, this is a perfectly senseless statement. It's funny and it's silly. So that we remember it easily. Yeah, do not go over the meaning of the statement, but memorize it right away. Yeah. Please stop calling me a zebra. Instead, learn how to call mind saving gold. Done? Learned? I'm going to close the slide and I'm going to see how many of you would be able to really do it. Ready? Well. Right. Now tell me. Now tell me the statement. I want to see how many of you are saying this statement. I really want to. <laughs> Those of us who said, no, we need a shortcut, I want to see you responding here. Yeah? Pretty, very good. The first one, just before pretty is Hina. And then, next, 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 next. Divya, half done. Okay, Hitesh, okay. To some extent, Vishesh, done. Very good, very good, very good. Mukesh, okay. To some extent, some of you are asking me to repeat it. I'm going to do it. Just hold on for a few seconds. Very good, very good, very good. Right? You have done it. Now let's go back to the same slide. Those who ask me to repeat, then you go with the statement. You know, the statement, if you have memorized it, that means you already know the reactivity series. Let me tell you. Look at the first letter of every word. P, S, C, M, A, Z. This first letter is a hint for you to remember the metal. P for potassium, S for sodium, C for calcium, M for magnesium, A for aluminium, and Z for zinc. I for iron, L for lead, hydrogen, copper, M for, it's not magnesium. The second M is for mercury. You have to keep this in mind. And then S is for silver, G is for gold. Done? Done, done, done. Right? So if you memorize this statement with the help of the first letter of every word in the statement, you will be able to recall the reactivity series in the same order. Yeah? Right? Done. And now let me give you a disclaimer. The metals which are here are only and only a few metals. You know periodic table has how many metals? It has around about 80 metals, not around, about 80 metals, 80. And according to our syllabus of class 10 CBSC, we are only learning some 10 to 15 metals as shown on the screen. If you are referring any other reference book like S. Chand or Together With or whatever, the list of elements given over there would be slightly mismatching with the list on the screen. Do not worry about it. Some 2-3 elements udhar idhar ho jayenge. Done? Right? Very good. Very good. Shall we go on? I see some of you saying 118 elements of periodic table. Yes, that's good. That's the right number. Well then, so are we done with the reactivity series? I just want to see yes. I mean, say yes if you are done. Done with the reactivity series? Done? 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 
Very good, very good, very good. Very good. Right, so let's go on. The first thing that is needed to understand any reaction is reactivity series and we are done with it. I am sure you all are done now, right? Well, what is the second thing? The second thing is balancing, correct? What do you think balancing is? Anyone in the class? What do you think balancing is? Balancing is something waiting for your response waiting for your response okay okay outermost shell of the atom is called as valency shell but good try dear yeah. are vishesh full form i mean full statement good my dear top dance your answer is right very good guys. I'm not taking all of your names. Do not worry. Do not mind. Please. Well, valency is nothing but in simple. It's nothing but the number of electrons either lost or gained or pleased shaped when, when a chemical bond is formed. Valency is nothing but the number of electrons lost or gained or shaped when, when a chemical bond is being formed. Do not worry. You don't need to take it too complicated. I'll simplify this for you. But before that, can you define ions for me? What is ion? Ion is? Ion is? Ion is? Still no correct answers. Charge? Charged particle Zubin, right answer. I find some of your names pretty familiar to me. Most probably you are the repeated attendees of my classes. That's good, that's good, very good, but some of you are correct. Ions are nothing but charged particles, yeah, ions are charged particles. What is charge? Plus charge or minus charge, it could be anything. So ions are of two types based on the type of charge that, it, that is possessed. The first one is cation and the second one is anion. I, I have written it as cat, so do not mistake it, it's cation, okay. So positively charged ions and negatively charged ions. There is a relation between valency and ions. If you know ionic form of any element, you know the valency, that's it. It is as simple as that. How many ions do you know? Do you? I'm sure you all know ions, right? What is ionic form of hydrogen? How many? Um, what is the ionic form of hydrogen? Ionic form of hydrogen. Thank you for telling me that you are not able to see the screen. Please be letting me know whenever my video is, uh, you know, just hindering the screen. Yeah, now you should be able to see. Please do update me if you are not able to see the screen because of the video. Yeah, I guess video is more, uh, not more important than the screen, right? Very good. Hydrogen, H plus. Very good, very good. Now, what is the ionic form of sodium? Sodium. Ionic form of sodium. Ion form of sodium. Why you say that? Let me clarify one point. Hydrogen is a peculiar element. It's something special which can form plus and minus charges as well. Hydrogen can be H plus or hydrogen can be H minus. Yeah. And the rest of you, very good, Bacho. It is Na plus sodium, Na plus. And now the real test starts. Tell me the ionic form of hydroxide. I'm writing it here for all of you. Tell me the ionic form of hydroxide, hydroxide ion, formula, hydroxide ion, formula, not H minus, not H minus, very good, Radhika is the first one, there is Hira and the list went on, very good, very good, that means you have a clear idea about ions. Now, hydroxide is OH minus, can you tell me the valency of hydroxide ion? Can you tell me the valency of hydroxide ion? Valency of hydroxide ion. Quickly, quickly. Very good, very good. Um, right, 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 right. Some of you are saying six, which is not. And rest of you are all great. Six is not, six is not. That's great, guys. Valency of hydroxide is nothing but one. But how do I know that? It is very simple. Valency of any ion is nothing but the charge that you see in the power. What do you see in the power of OH minus? I see just minus. Do you see something else? So if you don't see the number, should I take it as zero or something? 
not right when you don't have a number what you got to take not zero exactly it, it, it is unity correct so the valency of OH minus ion is in fact minus one but sign doesn't make a big difference here you can call it as one right so if you know ionic form do you know valency now you know it isn't it okay let's try it I'll give you ionic forms and now you got to tell me the valency ready ready very good very good very very good right but i don't see everyone being ready let me tell you the ion i mean let me tell you the ions ion of aluminium i'm not writing the formula the ion of aluminium what is the valency of aluminium with respect to its ionic form mm -hmm. Goli Someshwar, I'm sorry dear, yeah, is the first one to answer right. Nagma, Rahul, mm -hmm. Nishant, Mohit, many more. Valency of aluminium ion is 3. You know ionic form of aluminium? Al plus 3. So its valency is 3. Very good. And now, valency of uh, CH3COO minus. I have given you the formula because it's a different formula that you might not have frequently see the valency of the ion is it's very good one so now do you have idea about reactivity series valency in ion form do you have idea about all these three yes or no yes or no very good very good yes somebody says that's great then now if you have idea what shall we do is Let's go on to the equations. Now we are clear about three things that you need to know before you could go learn equations. So now let's take some equations and let's see if we are able to learn them or not. Okay. And before we could go to those equations, one more, one more step that you need to cross is understanding the mechanism. See, if I give you a random equation, there should be a pattern, right? It can't be like a C plus O2 gives SO2. Can an equation happen this way? Can the reaction happen this way? It's not possible, right? Yeah? Because there should be some pattern, there should be some logic. If you are writing a reaction, it should follow law of conservation of mass. It should follow many other laws like combinations and all that, right? So, let us also understand one very, very, very frequently seen logic or a pattern behind all these reactions. Okay? How many of you remember studying about single displacement? Single displacement reaction. Single displacement. Remember, right? Very good. Very good, Kumar. Well, if you remember single displacement, how do you identify? How do you identify if the given reaction is single displacement or not? How do you identify? Any 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 shortcut that you know? Okay, this is single displacement, or this is double displacement. For example, if I give you one reaction, how would you know if it is a single displacement reaction or double displacement reaction or whatever? For example, take, I'm asking you K plus H2O. You know, what happens here? Does it give something else or what is the product? How do we get to know? Very good, child. Such a nice set of responses. Almost everyone is doing good. Which proves that you have done your midterms really well and if you are preparing, your preparation is up to the mark. Very good. It undergoes single displacement, but how do we know? How do we know? It depends upon the reactivity, it depends upon uh, if the metal displaces uh, the, what is that, hydrogen or not. Okay. Okay. The products are also given in the chat box, which is very nice, very nice. But then let me just tell you something, guys. Single displacement, double displacement. Yeah, we know the definitions. But let's talk about one easier shortcut about the single displacements and double displacements. With the help of which, we'll be able to write the products of any displacement reactions easily. You want it? I mean, you want me to discuss it? Yeah? I always go according to the wish of my students, the majority wins. So let me know if you want to know the shortcut to predict the product of any single or double displacement reaction. Yeah, you're very good there. So there you go with one, what to say, a schematic representation 
of a single displacement or double displacement reaction. I guess again my video covers the screen, so I'm shutting it off for one more time. Yeah, right. So there you go. Single displacement is a reaction in which a cation. This should be a cation. A cation displaces another cation based on the reactivity. In this single displacement reaction, we all know, so I'm just going a little faster here. We all know that A should be more reactive. Only then it will be able to go fight with B and displace B. Just kick B out of its compound and occupy its position, right? So see, in the place of A, actually B was existing. Because B is weaker, A is jumping into the position of B here. And B is just being thrown out of the molecule, correct? This is single displacement. And double displacement is like mutual understanding. A goes to the position of C and C comes to the position of A. It's vice versa. They both are just exchanging the positions, correct? And now, remember something. Whenever you see an equation, say the previous equation which I gave you, K plus H2O, you want to understand if this is single displacement or double displacement. Yeah? The simple thing that you have to do is identify how many cations are there here. Is potassium a cation? Does it form a cation? Does it? Yeah? It does. Right? Hooray, metals are cations. So potassium is one cation. And now, do you have any other cation on the side of reactants? Yeah? Do you have any other cation on the side of reactants? And tell me the cation. What is the second cation here? What is the second cation? Are I am talking about K plus H2O. Calcium kaha se agya? It has to be not H2. The cation is H plus. Remember, H2O after dissociating gives you H plus and OH minus. Isn't it? It doesn't give you H2. So it has to be H plus. So this reactant set has two cations. One is H plus and the second one is K plus. How many anions are there in this reactant set again? I'm talking about the same reactants still. Any anion? Is there, a, is there an anion? Yes? Yes? Okay, if there is an anion, tell me what it is. Tell me what it is. It is? Okay, one anion is there and that anion is? Very good. The Ashish Kumar Das, right answer. Radhika, it's one, correct. Simran, correct answer. It's not O2 minus, it is OH minus. You see it here, right? So you have H plus OH minus and K plus, out of which there are two cations, two positively charged particles, and there is one negatively charged particle. So remember this as a Guru Mantra, guys. If you have two cations and one anion on the side of reactant, this Reactant set definitely follows a single displacement reaction, provided, provided one cation is stronger reacting material than other. Provided it follows reactivity series, when you have two cations and one anion on the side of reactants, it will follow a single displacement. And now, using the same, using the same trick, can you tell me the product here? K plus H2O, what does it give? I mean, what is the product here? Can you tell me the product? Can you tell me the product? K plus H2O. Very good. Um, it's a little long name. I call you as Bala. Bala Murugan, I guess. I'm sorry, here. Well, very good. Very good. Most of you are right, but some of you are going wrong. Some of you are going wrong. Yeah? Well, let me tell you the product. The product here has to be KOH. I'll explain you how it happens. Those who are asking me to explain, repeat, listen to this carefully. Whenever you have a set of reactants, first identify the cation. Potassium is a cation and out of H2O, H plus and OH minus is the ionization and H plus is the second cation. Done. So you have two cations and one anion. Do you have two cations and one anion? Do you? Yes. Yes, and if you have two cations and one anion in the given reaction set, that means it should follow which mechanism? Those who have understood, can you let me know which mechanism it follows? Very good. It follows single displacement. It follows single displacement, right? So if it is single displacement, then what should happen? Potassium 
should go fight with hydrogen, displace hydrogen out of its position. And when does it happen? It happens when potassium is more stronger than hydrogen, right? Is potassium stronger than hydrogen? Potassium stronger than hydrogen? Yes. How do you know? Remember, please stop calling me a zebra. Instead, learn how how is one hydrogen, right? And that how comes somewhere here in the middle, correct? And there you go with P, potassium. Don't you think potassium is more reactive than hydrogen? Obviously it is. So potassium goes, reacts here, displaces H plus, leads to formation of what? K O H. And then what is your H plus is left, but do you think ions are stable enough to exist as they are? No, right? They sooner want to get combined with other ion to form a molecule. How does it happen? That happens when you write a balanced chemical equation, isn't it? KOH plus it would be H2. Done. You just want to balance the equation. That's it. You're there. Right? Are we clear? How many of you are clear so far? Tell me. S if you are clear, tell me no if you want one more example. Tell me S if you are clear, no or no if you want one more example. Okay? I just go with the majority. Done, done, done. Yes, 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 yes. One more, one more, one more. It's a mixture, so let's do something. For those who are already understood, those who have already understood, let's do it as an assignment. And for those who did not and who did not get something out of it, let me explain one more time. Done? Right? So the next equation, let me see who does it first. Okay? So the next equation is I'm just writing it on the screen. Zinc plus a, G, N, O, T. Quickly, I want the product and I will see who is answering first. Those who have a doubt, hold on. I'm coming to explain. Right? Very good. Still no answers though. Okay. Sukumar. But please look at the valency. Your products are right, but zinc nitrate's valency is not matching. You know, remember valency? Remember how to write chemical formula, crisscross method? Okay, for those who have a doubt, I'm briefing it one more time. Just listen to me very carefully. Ready? Well, now whenever I'm asking you to write the product of this reaction, any reaction. First observe the reactants. Do you see the reactants here? Zinc plus AgMO3. Done. Now identify if these reactants can form cations or anions. How do you identify that? One more shortcut. If you find a metal, understand that it is a cation. Zinc is a metal, silver is a metal, cation. Nitrogen and oxygen, together they are an anion. Okay? So zinc forms cation, silver forms cation, but nitrate forms anion. Clear so far? Those who have a doubt, clear so far? Totally how many cations do we have? Two cations. Totally how many anions do you have? One anion. Right? Two cations and one anion is the count on the left hand side or on the reacting side. Now, so what if you have two cations and one anion? You have a hint, right? If you have two is to one ratio of cation and anion, that means the mechanism is going to be single displacement. Correct? If it is single displacement, what should happen? If it is single displacement, zinc should go fight with the cation present in the molecule. You might be thinking, why is zinc going and fighting? Why not silver going and fighting with zinc? Zinc is all alone. It doesn't have any family, no position, nothing. Silver has everything. It's in the compound form. It is stable. It has a position. Why will silver go and fight with a beggar like zinc, right? Zinc can come fight with silver because of its position, right? Yeah? One more thing. This happens only when reactivity series is satisfied. Only when this all alone element is more stronger than the element which is present in the compound. So, recall reactivity series one more time. Please stop calling me a zebra. Instead, learn. Please stop calling me a zebra, which means zinc. Instead, learn how copper mine saving silver right silver comes somewhere at the bottom 
Correct? Yeah? Okay, screen. Thank you. Thank you. Done. So, silver comes somewhere at the bottom. Zinc comes in the middle. Isn't it? That means what? Zinc is the topper of the class. Zinc is obviously more reactive than silver. What does it mean? It means that zinc is more stronger. It will go defeat silver like anything. Occupies its position. Leading to formation of zinc nitrate. And some of you have given the answer as ZnO3. Dear students, it is not correct because zinc valency is 2 and valency of nitrate ion is 1. Remember Kistros method of writing chemical formula, class 9 GBSC, chapter number 3, valency 2, valency 1. You have to cross multiply the valencies, lead to formation of a. What, what else is left? The other product, come on, those who said you want one more example, try now, try. What is the second product? Alere, some of you are feeling so sad that your answer was wrong. That's okay, my dear students, trying is kind of, okay. No, 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 Priya, yes, okay, Aja, yes, okay, 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 done. Now that you want one more example, let me give you some more examples to solve. I'm sure you're a little clear about the concept. Let me know this. Practice never hurts. Yes, I love the statement. Yeah. Are you clear about the statement and will you be able to solve it by your own? Now, if I give you some questions, will you? Ready for your answer. Yes? Yes? Okay. I'm just uh, opening one screen with some equations. Only reactants of the equations. Product is not given. Okay, so you try answering the first question. There you go to the screen. Mm. I guess five questions, not I guess. Yeah, there are five questions there of which this is question number one. Solve question number one. I'll see who answers first. Do not copy paste. You know, somebody was caught red handedly copy pasting. The Wikipedia link also they have pasted by mistake once in my class. So do not do that. Um, who is this? Uh, Vishesh, Ashish Kumar, Piyush, Preeti. Okay, in between Preeti and Ashish Kumar, I missed one name. Aryan. Good, good, good. Okay, good speed, good speed. And some of you are talking about the second one as well. Are you able to solve the equations? Are you able to solve the equations now? Are you able to predict the product of these reactions on the screen? I clearly see it. I clearly see it. Okay. Summary ZnSO4 plus S42. Please, please refer one more time. Aluminium sulfate. Aluminium sulfate valency has to be cross verified. Many of you are going wrong there. Magnesium chloride bala. Please refer to the valency. Okay, aluminium sulfate, Vishesh. Okay, that's good, that's good, going good. Right, you want the answers? You want to verify how many of your answers were correct? Yes? Yes? Okay. So meanwhile, some of you are asking that, that you are not able to understand the last one, dear, I am here, don't worry. So magnesium is the cation and H plus is the cation, isn't it? So this, let's talk about the last one guys, let's talk about the last one. So magnesium is one cation and H plus is another cation, two cations are there, correct? Can you count the number of anions and tell me here, how many anions are here? Number of anions? OH minus and Cl minus. That means two anions. So if you have two cations and two anions, should it be single displacement? Can you tell me if it is single displacement? Is it single displacement? I'm waiting for your answers. Yes. Are someone saying yes? Single displacement is one. I mean, when you have two cations but one anion. This is single displacement. Yeah? But then if you have two cations and two anions, this is double displacement. Right? What happens in double displacement? 
mutual understanding. It's just mutual exchange of ions. Magnesium comes to the place of hydrogen. Hydrogen goes to the place of magnesium. Then what happens? Does it form HOH twice? Is this at least possible? I don't think so. I haven't even studied about it. This leads to formation of, I'll write the product here, MgCl2 plus 2H2O. Done? Yeah, so this is called as double displacement reaction. Single displacement is when you have two cations and one anion. Double displacement is when you have two cations and two anions. Done? Right? And then the fourth one. Before we could go to the fourth one, rest of you, those who have done it correct, there you go with the answer sheet. Um, I hope you are able to see all the equations. If not, do let me know. Well, fourth one, array, simple. Maybe you are stuck with the balancing. It just gives you FeCl3, nothing else. Okay? FeCl3. Because iron is one cation and hydrogen is other cation. Obviously, iron is more reactive than hydrogen, just goes to the place of hydrogen, nothing else. But one constraint here is you should have an idea about this cross method. Only then you will be able to write it. So now tell me how many of you were, how many of you were, have got 5 out of 5, five sorry, 5 out of 5. 5 out of 5, 5 out of 5. Honestly, okay? Just got to be honest, okay? Yeah, that's good. Hira, nice name. Hina, again nice name. Very good, very good. And I love your honesty when you say that no, I did not get 5 out of 5. That's what you feel in life. Yeah, not just the numbers or marks. Honesty and personality is needed. Very good guys. 4 out of 5, Vivek. Good job. Very good. So now let me tell you something. Throughout this session, what did we do? Can you tell me what did we learn out of this session? What did you learn out of this session? What did you learn out of this session? Did you not learn anything? I don't see your answers at all. Okay. 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 Valency, reactivity series, ions. Done. Very good. But uh, behind my screen there is nothing, behind the web camera there is nothing written. Just whatever you see, five equations, that's it. Yeah? Well, 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 that's good. We spoke about valency, ions, reactivity series, and we majorly have understood how to write the products of some reactions. Double displacements and single displacement. Did you learn it? Yeah? Did you learn it? Say yes if you... Only understanding single displacement, double displacement, valency, etc. Right, 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 is not enough. You know what else you need to understand? Any idea what else you need? Any idea? Hmm, that's good. I see most of you saying yes. You need a little more. You need a little more study of basics of chemistry. And then you need to understand some tricks. I'm sure my video must be covered in this slide. I'm just removing it. Yeah. So some basic tricks to memorize equations. The way you have memorized a single double displacement today, practice, enough and enough practice is needed. Session notes and assignment is needed. Like whatever you're learning out of a session, you should have notes of it and you should have a practice assignment. Yeah. Right, guys. Then so if you are really looking out. To learn all these things, to learn all these things thoroughly and master all the chemical reactions of class 10 CBSC, I have a news for all of you. I'm going to launch one course in which you'll be learning about all the basics for perfectly 30 minutes and you'll be learning just tricks for 45 minutes, practicing exhaustively all the models for 45 minutes and at the end of which I also will provide you session notes and a assignment to test yourselves. So the course is going to be launched very soon. If you are interested to talk about this course or know more about this course, well, there you go with the course page probably. Yes, there you go with the course page. I'm launching a course which lasts for only two hours, only two hours in which you will be understanding how to memorize every chemical reaction for class 10 CBSC exams. By the way, do you know how many chemical reactions do you have in your syllabus? Yeah? Idea, any idea about how many chemical reactions do you have? 
How many? Uh, 50, 60, 70, 80 or whatever? Any idea? No? Okay. I'll just uh, find. I don't have the doc here but then yeah. There are around 150 chemical reactions that you got to learn from all five chapters of your class 10 syllabus. Around 150 on the minimum basis. Yeah. It's not 50, it's 150. So now, if you want to understand how to just conquer all those equations with the help of all the tricks, there you go with the codes page on the screen. And if you want the link for the codes, I'll be pasting the link in the chat box. You'll be able to see it right away. Yeah. And what I will do now is I'll also take you to the codes page and I'll show you how does it look like. Okay. So there you go with the codes page on the screen. This is where you are attending the webinar. Yeah. Right. Do you see it? Where you will be having two hour live session with me. I hope you all know my name by now. Yeah. And in which we will be talking about examples, practice, assignments, shortcuts, whatever I have shown you on the screen before a while. Yeah. And you know what, what would be the course price here? It is just 51 rupees. And this is an initiative taken from Veda to, to get every, every valuable stuff accessible to all the students. Right, so well, guys, once you click on enroll now button, you'll be redirected to this page where you have the payment option. You also will be able to see the full course details if you click on this part. Yeah, and one more thing one more thing there are limited seats. Learn a lot, many things like this. How many of you would be really as far as so? What I was saying is all about this course, and if you're interested, please enroll yourself as soon as possible because the number of seats is going to be a limit. Yeah, well guys, so I hope you have got some, some value out of this session. I hope you could learn something out of this session. You are looking out to have more webinars or you want to learn more stuff. Please make sure you let me know through the comment session. Not right now, since the video is offline, write it in the comment session. So I'll go through all your comments and uh, once I go through the comments based on the majority as usual, I'll take up the topics and I'll go with it. Done. Right? Well, very good. So remember, it's not all about the codes, but it's about how you study. And let me remind you how important class 10 CBSC is. Not CBSC, class 10 is. This is the first certification that you're going to get in your lifetime. And I wish you all good luck. I hope you all rock your exams and get super, super good grades. Right? Good luck, guys. Good luck. And as I told you, any tough topics or anything that you are aspiring for, please do let me know in the comment section. And I hope you have seen the link being pasted in the, what is that, pasted in the chat box. If it is not pasted in the chat box, I will write it down um, on the screen. Right. There you go. The link is v, I'll write here, vdnt.in slash um, well, slash chem 10 can check this is the link and it's already been pasted in your chat box guys i also see it yeah done very good so those who have enrolled welcome to the world of chemistry we are going to rock it like something and you're going to master chemical equations like hell yeah and those who are still thinking if you have to enroll or not think about it and just get back to us well guys i'll see you all in my session let's rock soon yeah so i'll see you let me sign off. Bye-bye everyone. Bye-bye. Have a good night and have a good learning. Bye. See you all.